gonna get to, we're gonna go back to um, kind of a workshop format really quickly. For the folks that joined, um, Corinna and Carolyn, you guys, if you want to join a table so you can be part of the conversation, it would be perfectly appropriate and helpful. It's always nice to have people that are actually um, in school. There, 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 here. there are a couple of tables who are who have less membership than others. So right. So, right yep. Now, if somebody wants to join up. up front here, I like to have you part of it. I'm gonna try to. Um, I'm gonna try to make this as short as possible. Over the past, um, actually, two years, we've been working on the code of conduct. Um, so, what you have for documents in front of you are there is a code of conduct, and there's two sections to that. So, there's the RS or Canary code of conduct itself, and then there's the shiny piece which is the consequences that we have developed. That's the appendix that's noted on the back of the Code of Conduct, the last sheet, page four. So you have the Code of Conduct for the district and you have, as, as well as the um, set of consequences. And then we also have, um, oh, where's your, where's your schematic, Steve? We're gonna have Steve share his schematic as well, which is the relationship between the Code of Conduct and our levels and then also the tiers in our RTI process for behavior. Um, and they, they correlate nicely, not perfectly, but pretty nicely. Um, we're not gonna spend a ton of time on this part of it tonight. I just want you guys to have the materials so that you are, um, you know, you're, you have all of the information that we've been, that we've been talking about. So what has, what has happened over the past year is that we've implemented the code of con, we've been implementing Folks have been implementing code of conduct forever, but we've actually sort of tried to systematize the actual collection of data. So what you have in front of you on a white sheet of paper with a bunch of numbers is specifically some information that was requested regarding offenses that we've had. So I'm going to look over Susie's shoulder for a second. And so we've got bullying incidents. Fights, assaults, alcohol, maybe tobacco, marijuana, other drugs, disrespect, defiance, vandalism, suspensions, expulsions, bus suspensions, and weapons. Those are big categories. Um, some of them are very easy to, to document. Weapons is really easy to document, doesn't happen much. And when we do, um, there's some pretty decent consequences. Um, suspensions are that we, what we asked is, and you'll notice obviously at the elementary level, there are, there are much smaller numbers of suspensions in school and out of school than there are in the middle school and high school, and that's because age appropriate consequences get a little bit more stringent as we get older. Um, drugs and marijuana, vaping, tobacco, all of that kind of information. None of this is, is um, rocket science, you, you get, it's all there. Some of the difficult definitions come around disrespect and defiance. Um, because at each school, there might be a slightly different sort of version of what, what is disrespectful and defiance. Um, insubordination kind of gets pulled into the, into the piece of it. So we tried really hard to meet as an administrative team and just talk about what those mean. Um, the other thing that you need to understand, I guess, need to see or know is that these are all levels two and three. So level two and three, are not typically taken care of, at least not outside of the classroom. Level one is what our teachers are doing on a daily basis. They may report everything to the principals, but they're dealing with those issues within their classroom setting. So when you see disrespect and defiance at like 300 here or 140 there, more than likely, there's a whole lot more of those sort of uncomfortable moments that happen that teachers are reporting to, to their administrators but are not necessarily, we're not taking it to the level of, um, you know, either suspensions or those kind of things. So for instance, I know Tyler and I were talking about some things that, some behavior stuff, there's 1,400 referrals at that, at, you know, that he's been reviewing or the administrative team at the high school. 
for the for the middle school, there's probably a, you know, 25, I don't know, 2,000, whatever it is. Each one of those, it's teacher, um, it's teacher input. So I don't, I didn't make copies for everybody, but there are, there's referral forms at the middle school and the high school, and I'm sure that the elementary schools are using similar things. But with those referral forms, teachers have um, discretion on how they input data into the system. So what we found is that there's some discrepancies between schools about how things are reported. So we're going to work on that. It's one of our things that we're going to work on. And I'm assuming that we'll get to there. Like when you look at the data you'll, and talk to the table, you'll probably say the same things. So there's a, this is a work in progress. Um, we're going to continue to take this information and the work that we've done with the code of conduct, and we're going to continue to refine it with our industry team. And then we'll also meet as a, um, as a code of conduct group each semester so that, we, that we're informing the board as we go along. So what would I would like you to do in your small groups is, and I think, I just want to make sure that everybody's got at least two people at the table. Corinna, can I move you? Come sit over here with Heather in the studio. Just so, well, I mean, it's, it's good for, if we've got staff, it's nice to have, um, you know, somebody at each of the tables as a teacher person. Teacher person. Okay, so we're going to do this quickly. We're tired and we want to do other things. But I would like you to just take some time and look first, as you, as you look at the data that's in front of you, what do you feel is working as you review the information? And take two or three minutes just at your table to talk about that. Everybody's got it. All right, so it's, it's uh, fairly simple. The more questions you answer correctly, the more money you get. Uh, oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm here. I'm here to uh, okay, so it, the, the point is, is that tier one is the regular classroom. On any given day, 88, that classroom works for 80 to 85 percent of students. They operate successfully within on that particular given day. Now you see, there's a permeable line between uh, of tier one and tier two. Tier two is still the regular classroom. And it's where differentiated plans come in for students. Uh, sometimes it might be that a student just needs that morning check-in. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I go right to that student and say, how, how, how did that go? Okay, what's gonna, what can I do to help you out today? Or it could be a fairly simple, uh, an index card or something on a desk or something on there uh, in the Google Classroom or whatever that's just their checklist of reminders on the things that we're working on. So they're, they're low-level informal plans, the parents are aware of them and so forth. But they're still part of the regular classroom teacher's toolbox. So uh, to the, to, back to the tier one, school-wide practice, second step, coming on board for that. Thank you very much to the board for the support on that. Uh, becoming trauma-informed schools, positive behavioral uh, interventions and supports, um, positive classroom climate, uh, the classroom management that's involved in the classroom climate plays a, obviously plays a significant role. Relationships come before relevance, which comes before rigor. Relationships always first. Uh, targeted social skills instruction at tier two. So uh, fairly simple behavior plans, classroom management support. Somebody might talk with a colleague or might talk with an administrator. Hey, you know, this is kind of what's going on. You got some thoughts on this for me. Um, somebody might you know, go over to uh, Hanson, might go into Jenner and say, this is kind of what I'm seeing here, you, you deal with these sorts of things. Like, this is a good day for you, this is a tough, tough day for me, what do you say? Uh, incentivize supports. It might be as simple as the extrinsic piece might be in place for somebody, just to get them, to pull them back in and, and to get them uh, headed in the right direction. Parent involvement. Uh, then you have some kids who, you get into a more formal process, so it's not that permeable uh, surface. It's, it starts to get into, we might have push-in or pull-out services. There are going to be uh, intensive, and it's still regular education, uh, interventions that are in place there, probably involving your RTI team that you have, the behavioral RTI. The, uh, it may involve mental health professionals, uh, heavier conversations with parents around that particular topic. Um, could, could, if the kid's going to come in and out of the classroom and, and need specific support and timeouts to, to gather themselves, it means that there's going to be more restrictive setting on that. 
suspension alternatives. Instead of looking at a student saying this is a suspendable offense and so forth, what is the goal? I, I love one of the pieces you said. Who, who, does, who is that working for? Something like that. Uh, is that suspension making a change, a positive change in the behavior, or is it answering a need for others? So this, that's an important question for us to consider because the younger and younger the age, too. And then the last level is the behavioral referral, which is special education. Um, and Nancy asked a question like, if somebody's, if the classroom design is for all, can a student, is there a certain number that pushes somebody from tier one into tier two, a number of situations? And in some cases, it might be a number. You start to see a pretty good pattern. You're not breaking it. You're not seeing positive results. In other cases, it may be the significance of one or two uh, situations. Then um, you get to the, there should be fewer and fewer students obviously moving into these different levels as you go. Thank you. So the next question was just, you know, how does that, <laughs> sorry. So the next question on the protocol that I put forth for you is just, you know, how does that relate to the, um, to the code of conduct? And obviously it relates fairly closely in terms of, um, you know, their tiers and our levels are similar. We need to do more work with it though. I mean, because we want to have them be, a, be sort of that as Steve calls it, that permeable flow back between the two of them. But if there's any other, like at your table, if you want to discuss that for a minute, just to say what suggestions might you have for us in order to marry those two together more carefully or more clearly, that would be helpful. Um, so why don't you take a minute to do that? And also, finish, I know this is, we're moving fast because we have so much to do on the board level after this. But mostly, I just wanted people to look at the data, have some, have some conversation around it. And recognize that this is, um, there's nothing simple about this. Last question prior to the wrap up, which is going forward, um, what area of focus would you like our Code of Conduct Committee to be honing in on for the next year? One, what, one area of focus, and it can be different in each level or a different in each one. It doesn't matter to me, but let's get it written down so that we can. As a group, as our administrative team, we can talk about it, and then our code product team can work on that. So what I would like, thank you. What I would like from our groups is just some documentation to come to me so that I can gather for our code of conduct and our administrative team meetings. Um, what I heard when I walked around is that we're all dealing with sort of. Um, the humanness of this, the reality of that, it's, it's, it's really, um, discipline is a really touchy topic. It is, um, we all have different levels of tolerance as people. Um, we have different levels of flexibility. Um, so trying to find the consistency, I, when I was walking around, that was what I was hearing, is it's really difficult to find the consistency. So that is our goal. Um, we don't, you know, our goal in life is not to irritate people. Our goal is to actually work with students and have that be a good outcome and have those students learn. So that the, the information that we got from Cassie this afternoon, this evening, it's, it's again, it's about informing ourselves on how we're dealing with our, with our population. And it is an ever-changing population. Um, when I think about, I've been here for 30 years, and I think about the differences between students now and what they were and what I'm dealing with now. There's a lot of similarities, but there's some vast differences in terms of what we're dealing with. Um, so I would love to say that we will get this all figured out and everybody will be happy, but it's probably not going to be that way. So I think the, the conversation just needs to be ongoing. And we need to be willing to um, ask hard questions about it, of this stuff with each other and not, uh, the hardest part of all, is that we tend to get um, offended with each other. And so we need to try to step outside that, I think. So we're going to keep working forward. Mr. Connolly. Okay. So Let's get this back together. Back and forth. <laughs> is first things first, uh, in, in just a minute, people will be giving administrators or whoever took notes will give the information back to the students. Then if the administrator at the table would collect all the yellow sheets, unless somebody wanted to take a copy of that at the table. 
uh, all the information that you have so we can just clean it up. Then thirdly, um, oh, here. we're going to have the gentlemen, uh, they're going to start to set up for a regular board meeting here. And I would ask, um, I need to uh, take a few minutes and talk with the board in that other room. But before we can do that, um, Ms. Dubert, I would just have somebody make a motion to go into that executive session <laughs> on the employee of the employee. Employee. I would like to make a motion to go to. Somebody write that down so I remember. Four, five, six, zero. Six, 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 Okay. So we're going to step into the session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A sub second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designed for noble residents. The board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input. For example, matters involving personnel. Okay, that being said, do we have any public input today? Oh, oh well, I, I just first wanted to say that I'm not. Okay, but I'm not a member of the president of the district. I just wanted to declare that out before. But you are an employee. I am an employee. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> Okay, I'm Carol Carlin. I'm a sixth grade math teacher at the Boulder School. I came tonight with three different versions of what I wanted to say, and I decided not to read them, and you know, which I hope will be okay. Um, based on the presentation that you had tonight and the little one for the call that I sat through today, I'm aware that you guys are working really hard on the code of conduct, and I'm delighted. I came here in October of previous fall to talk about my concerns with behavior in middle school. I continue to be concerned about behavior. Um, I feel like the numbers, 80 to 85 percent of the things that are dealt with in the class is smaller than what is actually happening. I think teachers are doing a phenomenal job. I think the numbers are far higher than 85 percent of what we're doing successfully in our classroom. And the classroom is really good throughout the building. My concern is the few kids that are incredibly disruptive very concerned about the effect that it's having on your staff and on the other students. And I know you're working really hard to try to figure out what to do with those kids and what consequences are appropriate or if punishment is the way to go. But I, at this point, though I'm sympathetic and sympathetic to the trauma and the problems that these kids are coming to school with, I'm starting to be a lot more concerned about the rest of the students. The students that are seeing the same repeating measures day after day, behaving profoundly inappropriately in front of adults and other students. The language is incredibly foul. The physical behavior is unacceptable. I had a staff member to say to me today that had another person come into her space made her feel made her feel as uncomfortable as a student made her feel yesterday at school. And she would have need that person in the door and called 911. I think we have some real serious safety issues that I know are being dealt with. I know um and Melinda are doing what they can. I just don't think our code of conduct is clear enough. I don't think we know what to do with those problem students that are habitual. The names of the kids that everybody knows that go to the planning room daily or are getting an in-school suspension. 
out of school suspension. If they continue to be a problem, I think we need alternative programs, or I think we need better education for staff members. Something needs to change because it's affecting <coughs> the education of the rest of the students.
find any discussion or any errors or any Okay. We went over that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job. Um, okay, all those in favor of accepting the minutes? Was that six out of five? Five, 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 I'm going to make this super short. So mm -hmm. right now, we have student council elections ongoing until tomorrow morning sometime. Tomorrow evening, we will announce the, student, the new student body president. Um, four candidates right now. Um, no idea. It's one, but this is great. Um, Latin dinner night was on Friday. Uh, we raised, um, I don't know how much it was, but I, I was there. But um, it was to be quite successful. Uh, and I believe a portion, if not all, of those funds are going to be running up the project, which is great. Um, class day is on Tuesday. I thought I would just mention that because it's coming up and kind of surprised me last year. Mm. Ready for it? Um, and uh, one other thing, well, two other things, but so the, I, I walked into the bathroom the other day and noticed that there was no toilet paper and half the mirrors were gone. Um, and I, I thought children had done this, but it turns out that we would, the custodian staff was trying to um, contain some of the craziness that was happening there. We were in history and we actually saw something that was leaving out the window. So there was a there was a situation in which a student that I'm aware of a student was caught uh, he had ripped the things off the wall, and stuffed the toilet paper into the urinals, and then he ripped the eight mirror off and had damaged that. Um, I'm not aware of the other. I just I just wanted to say that I think it is um, you need to pay attention to what is happening in the bathrooms. I hope to monitor the outside, so obviously not on the inside, but... Um, to, to a certain degree, you have to, you have to walk in. Yeah. And, and see, but I, I just wanted to say thank you and, uh, for helping to keep those up, because... But, um, and then last thing is, I just thought I would mention, I went to the main youth leadership um, seminar over the course of the weekend, Thursday through Sunday. Um, really amazing program that I really hope we continue in the future. Um, Conroy is one of the MCs this year, he's done it in the past, and um, it, I think it's a really great program that we should um, definitely keep going. And I learned a lot, and I'm very excited to use what I learned. Um, it gets out. Uh, the girls' softball team played tonight against Bitterford. They beat Bitterford 11 3, so they move on. Okay, the next round is the Scabro, who's had about 104 regular season wins on the TV street. Maybe like feed out of the last one in championship. Well, the Scarborough is good, but we have the spirit. We, <laughs> but we can, the team we just beat lost to Scarborough 5 4. And they beat them 11 3. So, but we lost this car with funding from that. So you never know. So you never know. Thank you. For my, I'm sorry. For my, what does the M stand for in the youth leadership thing? Me. Me, thank you. I just, I need to catch up. Oh, sorry. Like, no, it's not, it's not your fault. I just did catch up. I just wanted to that. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Next, contract questions. So uh, we have done, we've met uh, frequently, what we've met enough this spring to put forward a, a contract. The uh, board has, uh, in the preliminary phases, and we've talked about any language pieces, we've talked about the, the, the wage scales that adjust for also the January 20, January 2020, uh, yeah, January 2020 uh, minimum wage change, and so uh, the contract it went out to you electronically with all the appropriate changes in it. 
So now what we're at is uh, to see if there's a motion to ratify the sentence. And that's the AFL-CIO? That is the AFL-CIO. Second. Any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Thank you. And uh, the same exact process has gone through for the support staff, so I'll let you do motion for that. motion to accept the contract for the support staff as well. Second. Okay. Discussion or questions? Both one. Okay, all those in favor? Support staff contract. So, uh, generally, these two particular contracts are done just through the central office and information is brought back to the board, but uh, in preparation for next year's work, um, uh, the, the, the one contract that we get uh, for next year is a teacher contract, so I was bringing administrators in this year to give you just some uh, cursory examples of how the process might work. I appreciate your time. Okay, so we've already done number seven, code of conduct, right? Yes. yes. So number eight, superintendent, someone higher. So that would be to give the superintendent permission uh, from uh, it would actually be June 14th, well, no, June 13th, that's correct, because we're going to talk about meeting on the 12th, is that right? So we'll, we'll cover that one in just a second. So June 13th, uh, since the last board meeting would be June 13th, and that would be uh, being able to uh, do the hiring and the notify the board of the hiring in July, at the July meeting, and then the August meeting, and then bring it back over to the board in September, because we end up in situations where people make changes in the summertime and we can be responsive and not keep people working. So this is the weekend? Yes. It's an yeah. So that's what I'd like to make a motion. I'll make a motion for that. I'll second. All in favor? Any curiosity as to what the consistent Otherwise, if I don't have a meeting for a month, I have to say to somebody, I'll bring the meeting forward to the board for a month. That you know, in a few minutes. Okay. Would um, uh, somebody like to make a motion to table number nine? I'm going to go to table number nine. <laughs> that was quick. Oh. <laughs> I guess so, yes. Discussion about this, or we'll do it again. Would it do, would it do it during our workshop? Well, or, so what we could do is um, the next meeting. Uh, it, it looked like from the emails that people thought that June 12th, because you have to ratify the vote. The vote's on June 11th, right. so June 12th okay. would work because the 13th is convocation and the graduation is the next night. Uh, 12th going to work for me. I can't commit to I will vote for the we had a Dustin said he could make it. Uh, Rebecca said she, uh, Becky said she would be back. Joanne, you said yes. Jimmy, she were yes. Yes, it's so June 12th. I was curious about that. Because that's all that's to do. We don't, well, unless you have other business. What's for that? Time? Well, we'll take those policies. Oh, what we're going to grab Wasn't that the, the teacher raised the board of Was that uh, what you wanted to talk about no. that night? Well, that was something we were going to throw in there. You got to go to well. the other sections together. Okay. Yeah, I have that just very quickly in the other section, which is an update. Okay. So, so did we just say the 12th at 6 o'clock, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Norman, I was wondering if there are other board meetings that he needs to attend. I think he has met his obligation this year. Okay. <laughs> I love you guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. Feel You're right. Right. Feel right. Right. Uh, All right, so we have to vote on yes. tabling number nine policy meeting to the next meeting. I got Travis and Denise. Okay. All in favor? Okay. 
Okay, moving down to number 10. Okay, um, I want you to know that though I go through names quickly with you tonight, that we did not go through our hiring process as quickly. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm not sure which one you're looking at. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to, i got to guess which one you're looking at. Oh, yeah, 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 that's so, wow. The first uh, two, the first two, the first, I'm going to separate two positions out because they're the anticipated openings based on the June 11th vote. Uh, the first one is Lily Newhouse for an English teaching position in grade nine. Uh, she, she and I had a wonderful conversation about, uh, she did a completely different spin that I did not expect from To Kill a Mockingbird and some other things that, uh, and she has a master's degree. Um, uh, let's see, then we have also Mary McCollett for Anticipated Social Studies, grade 12 and an elective. She also has a master's degree. Again, highly impressive candidates, good conversations, went through three different things. So those are anticipated openings, so I'd like to I'd like to get a separate vote on these two. We'll do that first. Yes. Okay. So we'd like to make a motion. I'm going to motion to open. Okay. Uh, both? Okay. All those in favor? Did you get a coke for something? So let me see. You are fine. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, now, um, I'm going to separate out two others. Uh, the first one is Abby Pelletier. I sent you out uh, a quick recap of her food service director application. I mean, she's been from uh, the current school system. She's in a, in a small school system. Uh, out of 1,100 students, and she's also worked in Florida in a county that, uh, that had 50,000 students in the college program. I think she's going to do just fine. She, had a, she, did, she went through three rounds, and she did a tour of four of the cafeterias with us and provided feedback on things she saw and interacted with people. It was great. So that's one person on the administrative side. The other, the other one is a dual role. There are two people. Um, Spencer for the MHA teaching principal role, uh, Spencer Libby and uh, Andrew Elwell. And you want to just hit on an example of how that might be split? Sure, sure. So, um, for instance, um, Andrew will take on the out of district coordinator piece and transitioning the afternoon um, extended learning opportunities. We'll do an IEP administration and budget oversight, daily scheduling, that kind of thing. Spencer's going to take care of transportation, nutrition, standards alignment, um, triennial testing, um, NHS liaison, etc. Um, both of them will do support staff evaluations, and both of them will do um, teacher evaluations. And professional <coughs> development, um, community liaison, and publicity. Those will be shared positions as well. So I have a I have a breakdown if anybody wants it. Um, you can send it out. Yep, I can give it out to you actually. And I just think this is a great opportunity, but. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just separate those out because they're administrative positions. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is the, uh, okay. Yeah, Abby <laughs> <laughs> Pelletier and then Andrew and uh, Spencer uh, for the two administrative positions. Yes. Would you all please? That's what I just wanted to All right, Mr. And second, second. Well, there's discussion. Okay, all those in favor? Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to go down through a number of the other ones for me to sign up. I forgot to say the first thing I've uh, ben Chase is an educational technician currently in our um, multiple pathways program. He would be our successful candidate to move forward to you as the uh, as the English teacher. Jen moves to the uh, oversight role and so forth that was part of the grant, and so that creates that opening. Um, so that's may I just go through the positions and you can ask me any specific questions you want. To bring back up. Well, uh, Roshin McCuckin. A nice Irish name like that, third grade classroom at Lebanon. She has been a teacher in Sanford for in grade four for 11 years and has her special education in, in, uh, master's degree and uh, fosters autonomy and collaboration. Uh, Matt Nelson from Sanford's not talking about it. Uh, 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like the second one we take over. <laughs> yes, that's what he said. That's why. Third, because he still counts third. Um, he doesn't work out. Uh, Lisa Buckholz for second grade at Hanson. She is uh, originally from Georgia. She went to Georgia State University in Kennesaw. Then she uh, went to Connecticut. She taught for 11 years. I believe it's 11 years there. Very successful in Connecticut and moved back to Georgia for one year. She and her husband are relocating to this area because the husband has family here and they like the idea of Maine. Uh, great feedback on her as well. Uh, Chelsea Grant, second grade teacher at the Cousin School, um, bachelor's degree, step seven-ish, a positive role model. Uh, previously at RSU two for six years in second grade, RSU two to me is like our mirror school in all that. They, they, they're exactly where we are in proficiency. They, they, we're the two state leaders in, in a number of initiatives. Um, it, it, I've talked with her principal. I know the school did as well, Christy Clark. A great reviews. Amanda Anaselli. Um, this is one of those really fun ones to do because as soon as I'm sitting here talking to the person saying I'm going to bring your name forward, get the reaction, and I say, and I hold my hand out the reaction. We go like this. She's so excited. I say, yes, I love that. Uh, she's been an integral part of the Dover Growing Readers and uh, Dover Growing Writers programming. They are great relationships, calm, strategic, logical, as her master's degree is uh, going to do a great job for us. Liana Andre, uh, no, Andra, Andra, Andra. Liana Andra, she has been a long-term substitute with it. This is first grade at New Meaning Cousin. Um, she is a long-term sub at North Grove Elementary Schools, and, and so we understand who she already is, and she seems to have been known by a person by the name of Tracy Hallisey, uh, our assistant principal literacy coach there who highly recommends her for the position. So we would be excited to have her join us. Brian McMillan, grade nine science teacher, he and I geeked out for an hour. That was pretty good. Um, he did his interning at Dover Middle School in eighth grade science. He has done crazy things. He's, uh, he's been a noise scholar. He's, uh, he's uh, uh, biked an uh, 800 mile trip across a lot of Europe. He's, Great with connections, discovery based science. It's going to be an exciting young guy. Um, we have a kindergarten teacher for Vivian E. Huzzy. I think she's hiring 64 people. Uh, Megan Lyon. Yeah. Megan is in Messina, New York. And I said, well, well, we'll reach out to you and we'll do it online uh, over the computer. And she said, no, I'll fly it. And she wanted this job. Um, four years kindergarten and literacy specialist in her background. Certified trainer in mindfulness, yoga, and growth mindset. Huh. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Audrey Colton and what? Okay. Uh, Audrey, Audrey, I'm just going by my practice here. Audrey Coleman, a sixth grade ELA teacher. She is at uh, Barnett in in um, Vermont, and she has been at Edmonds in grades six, seven, and eight. Uh, she and I had a great discussion about uh, uh, a book by Robert Colvin, who was a uh, um, civil rights movement before um, Rosa Parks, uh, but shunned in, in her role. Uh, so she just, just a charming and lame, great conversation about the text. Multiple means of representing, of representation, multiple means of expression, multiple means of engagement. Just, I had a wonderful conversation. Computer teacher at the, uh, in replacement of um, Amy Becker there is a guy named Don Pete. Don is currently our building sub there, so we have known him for a year, and he is, he is going to have a blast down there, and I say that because he's into rocketry. Uh, you wouldn't believe the rockets in the back of that one right now. Um, so he's going to do some crazy cool stuff with this. Computer technology education. In um, grade 9 ELA, English teacher is Ryan Davis. Ryan would be uh, step one with a master's degree. He and I had great chats about she Shelley Frankenstein, about Homer and the Odyssey, about, uh, predictable, about predicting uh, behaviors, averting behaviors dealing with issues uh, in a constitutional fashion. I thought it was a very interesting approach what he was talking about. Um, so I think he's going to be a nice fit to the high school. 
Mr. Jordan Carpenter with the English grade eight, English teacher grade eight, uh, writing specialization. Oh, excuse me, Ms. Jordan Carpenter. Uh, she, I saw that she was involved in this thing called Trekkers, and I said, hey, you got any relatives in the Thomason area? She said, yeah. I said, how about like 19 of them? Uh, because they do the, they gave this Trekkers program. I love it when I look in a package and see, I know this teacher who work with you, I know this teacher who work with you, I got great feedback everywhere I went. Social work anticipated. <laughs> so, oh, this isn't anticipated, is this connected to the budget? No, oh. no, this is okay. actually, um, in fact, okay. so um, we have um, we put forward the name of Emily Nathan, who is currently um, working in a basically a self-contained group home tech situation. So she's kind of we're looking to hire her for the MHA social worker position. Um, she has a lot of experience and in this population, so we're feeling like that's a good fit. She also went over and spent um, several hours with the staff and the kids, so she knows what she's getting into. Um, and the last one is Andrew, oh, and I am not going to try to say you. his name. I can do this. You can, can do it. Do yes. He's very, he's got a um, lovely, go for it. Carry out to suckers. There you go. Yeah. Nice job, people. Okay, so I'm not even going to try. Anyways, <laughs> Mr. Andy's, um, That's what he goes for. It's what he is. And Andy is actually currently working as an ed tech in the district, but he is, um, a, he is a retired special education teacher who decided he wanted to come back to work. So he retired out of um, New Hampshire, and he's heading our way, and uh, he's going to be at the Milton School, and I think that he's, he's very excited about it, and he's actually going to, um, I think, shout out for the rest of the year already. Sorry, shout right in, so it's all good. Yeah, yeah he's be back. That's, of course, when you hire somebody from that level of experience. Yeah. Uh, a little that's, higher. That's a little okay, but. That's more costly, but um, the point is that we found the right person for the right job. That's everybody. Is there any name that you think I missed on that list? Uh, uh, do you want to go over the retirement or resignation? Uh, I think it does. Uh, or separately? Uh, yes. Okay. I'll make there a motion to hire those recommended by the Thank you. Second. Where is it? Thank you. All those in favor? Please, if you have some, feel free to also send me questions. That would be great. Um, so I have. Okay, so I have a couple of. Uh, let's see, I have a, have a resignation. One is uh, from Courtney Farley, who teaches at the Eric Dalton, Dalton School. I believe she. I'm not 100% sure on this. I think she does Reiki or something like that. Also, she may be starting her, her own personal business in that. So she says she has enjoyed her career working in the district and many opportunities that have provided her. However, she's decided to pursue a different career path for more uh, for her future in the workplace. Uh, the experience she's gained working in a variety of committees and teaching teams has been invaluable. She thanks everyone for her support. Um, then I have a letter by Jay Peter that says, I am writing this letter to inform you that I've accepted a position in a different school system for the 1920 school year. Um, this is a surprise for the system. Please accept this letter as a formal resignation as a speech and language pathologist. And this is going to hurt. Really good. Really hard to find. Really good. Um, it's, it's a mix of emotions. She's been here nine years, great with the experience, wonderful people. She's had a pleasure working with great community, and uh, this is always going to be a part of how she is. I have a, uh, so those are under the teacher contract, so I would need a motion on those two. I make a motion to accept those under your draft. Thank you. The uh, two notifications to you are uh, Marcia Miller, uh, no high school special education education. That's that's a nice yeah. talk. She's she's a, a crazy math lady, so um, she can help kids at any level here in the uh, learning center right upstairs. Um, so she says it's been a fun, it's been fun, but all things come to an end. 
Bob and I plan to see more of the grandkids, but more importantly, probably drive each other crazy. Uh, like it, tell it like it is. And then Sandy's worm. Uh, she is a uh, Title one Ed Tech, so that's regular education. She's notifying us of her resignation due to retirement from a position at Title One, and it has been her pleasure to uh, live and learn and, and love with the uh, students and staff at the school. I don't. Uh, that is it. Okay, moving on to other. Just one. Uh, this is just a heads up for moving forward in the um, appropriation in the legislation. The, uh, the piece about uh, forty thousand dollar baseline for our teacher salaries. The, the decision at this point, um, which will be going forward, I believe, is that there is no change from nineteen twenty. Which is a great thing because the budgets are pretty Already much done. the votes happen. Uh, 2021, the minimum that a, a school system can offer for VA levels step zero is 35,000. We're fine. Step uh, the second year out, uh, third year out would be uh, 37.5. We're about there. The fourth year out would be uh, $40,000. Now, the money that 100% uh, of the change in this cost comes from the state. And there's a question still going out there about does it impact just this level right here or what happens down your scale, these kinds of things. So I'm still looking into that question. Um, my guess will be that it's going to be this portion because it's only counting $28 million. My guess would be more of 100 million. It's going to be all the way down. Them. And, um, <laughs> I think that uh, by the time this finishes out, that's a fourth year, there's a new election. Let's see what happens and where things go. So um, in order for our district to be in line for something like that, to move that along as evenly as possible, we probably have to be at a 3.5, 3.1, or a 5.1 or 5.2 increase per year on just the, uh, that's just the raise line. That's not, the raise in to get steps. So if you recall, that's more like almost a, that's close to a, like a 5-8 increase in each year for people to hit that. But we do have to actually because we negotiate it next year. Yes, yes. I just have one other, if you guys, I just wanted to update you on the Ryan home. Um, we are, Holly and wrote some grants and we were able to, um, come up with about $35,000 so we'll be able to put our house parents in play. I know, it's doing a great job. Um, so we're going to be hiring over the summer to start for September 1 with them. And um, we will, over the summer, we're going to work on the installation of the, the boiler piece. We are, we have raised enough that we can do the boiler piece. And then I just got word the other day that um, the Bourbons are going to support the installation part of it. Um, we're going to try to do more of it through fundraising so we can keep that as a, as a sort of a safety net if we need it, but if not, regardless, we'll get all that done for this, this summer and so that we can launch for real. And I'm working with state legislators on revising some language around shelters and stuff for homeless kiddos. Um, and we're working with other districts about trying to start their own in their own place. So we're doing it. So it's all good. So can you just remind me what's the number of Sure. So in the district this year, I've dealt, I've worked with or spoken with or throughout the K-12 system with about 57 students who have been impacted by homelessness. And that's a wide variety of issues. Um, Twelve of those kids are what I would consider unaccompanied at the, up at the upper levels, through high school mostly, K-12. Um, the other students have been impacted through, we've had, we've had a lot happen this year. We've had the fires in the, in the homes, we've had, a, we had an accident at birth or a car drove into a, to a, you know, so there's those kind of things. And then we've had several just um, typical financial issues that have created some, some difficulties. Most everybody is in play right now in a good place. I have two students that I'm still kind of trying to figure out for the, uh, as we go into the summer. And, you know, it'll be a lot simpler when we have the house open so that I can, like, just put them there. Six to eight beds for the fall. Six, six beds right now for the fall, yeah. 
yeah. And I and honestly, I think six beds will be enough. I mean, we don't have there's not there's always a need, but students don't always want to accept the support because there's a lot of parameters that go with that, like you have to buy by the rules or substance abuses and you know those kind of things. So so it so it, it limits the number of students who are willing to take out to advantage of the opportunity. But particularly for some emergency situations, having that availability of 24 hour coverage is gonna be huge for what we do. So good stuff. Uh, oh, second public. Join, I'll be brief. Does anybody have any other others? I know it's third. I actually. Oh, okay. So, wonderful. Well, I'm pretty good. Do you want a 12? Uh, so, Mike Roberts, Crimson Middle School, and I want to thank the two staff members that were here. And like Carol said, um, we're well above the 85% in terms of um, what's right with the middle school, but you can see the caring and the challenges of what we're working on with the other three to seven percent. Um, and those two ladies, for the record, um, are positive and have uh, virtually um, no issues in the classroom. We keep side by side on the bottom floor, six great teachers and our fabulous educators. So I, I, I applaud, um, I think it's a symbol of how district-wide how much our teachers care and, and the level of frustration when we're not reaching students. And some of those students are already um, in different programs for next year. I, I, uh, I thank Joey and Paul for the conversation that we had tonight. Um, but it's just a level of caring and wanting to improve um, and a lot of hard work and we have fallen short. Uh, but it is, uh, like Mr. Collins showed us, at the top of that pyramid that we are um, a work in progress and working very hard as a school to move forward. Um, and I think tonight is just um, a strong sign of how much um, the teachers care about each and every kid. Um, and I was, I was pleased to see them speak, although the frustration, um, uh, I think it's a level of the community to all 530 kids where we're succeeding being with 510 or 520. And we're not giving up. I feel mm -hmm. good at where we're heading. And I feel good at what the board's doing. Um, and I appreciate them coming in tonight. I just want to say that. I think that we were keeping us going because we don't think we're not a blue space. I said go blues, but I think the camera's still on it. So. Oh, 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 goodness. Oh. Ruin the whole thing, Mike. Sit. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to give you an update on our Community Television Association pain bill. It passed the Senate on May 23rd, and it passed the House on May 27th. It is okay. now on to the governor for signature, and 90 days after that, it should be law. Does that mean that the cable companies will abide by this? <laughs> we are fully expecting that they'll try to take the legal route, um, because they didn't fight as hard as we thought they would during the legislative piece. So as far as we're concerned, 90 days after we should be able to go out and high yak, we should be able to put our public access channel up on the program guide, um, places should be able to expand in 15 homes per square mile as opposed to 30. Um, and there, the channels that got slammed into the upper 1300s should be returned to where they originated. So I want to give you an update and thank everyone for your support. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.